All right, let's get started. Thanks again for your patience. Welcome to this webinar on signal processing with Origin and Origin Pro. My name is Ishwar Ayer. During the webinar, please use the QA, Q&A window in Zoom to ask specific questions. You can also use the chat window to put general comments in there. For example, if you think I'm going too fast or whatever comments you have, please communicate with us. I have my colleagues from Tech Support who have jo joined as panelists. They will be looking at your Q&A as well. So please feel free to communicate. A few notes. After this webinar is done, perhaps later today or early next week, we'll send you an email with the link to the recording and also link to download this origin project that I'm using. So you'll get all the data that's in this project, then you can play the recording and then go through all these analyses yourself. Also in that email, there will be a link to a very short survey and please, please respond. Your feedback is very important on how we are doing and not just that, what else you want to see in origin in the area of signal processing? What additional tools? Do you want another in-depth webinar that focuses on certain aspects or any other webinar topics for origin for that matter? So your feedback is really helpful. And as you know, we release two versions of origin every year. We just released origin 2020B, which is what I'm using end of April. And then the next version origin 2021 will be released in October. So the sooner we get your feedback, the better chance we have of adding more tools or improving what we have. Okay. Again, feel free to communicate with Q&A and um, chat windows, please. Okay. So today I will go through various examples of tools, gadgets, and apps available for signal processing with Origin and Origin Pro. Okay, somebody is asking, is the free trial version available for only 21 days? Um, uh, that's a good question. I just want to point out that if you click here, you'll get a free trial of Origin that lasts for 21 days. But due to the COVID crisis, because all of us are working from home and we know many of you students don't have access to your university uh, computers perhaps, we have a COVID-19 license, special license. Currently, that's available till June 20th, so about another month, a little less. But it's fully functional based on Origin Pro. There are no watermarks. So you can apply for it, one product key per person, and then you can install and play with it. And so you could get that license and then look at the recording and go from there. Okay. Okay, so to start with, we have a product area on our website. If you go to products and under that, you go to Origin, Origin and Origin Pro. We have various uh, areas where we have highlighted the features available like peak analysis, statistics and such. This is a signal processing page. So this may be a good place to start with. Again, I have put the link in the project. You can just click and open. So this gives you an idea of what's available various tools, sub areas, smoothing, filtering, transforms, wavelet analysis, convolution, okay, decimation and such. I will go through several of these, but not every tool, okay? Also, in addition to what's available in the product itself, we have been creating apps for origin. Perhaps you're already familiar with that. We have over 200 apps. So on the right side of the origin interface in recent versions, we have this app bar. Okay? And on top, there is an add apps icon. So if I click that, it opens an app center, which can be opened with the F10 shortcut key as well. Here you can go see what are the various new apps that we just released, okay? Also, you can go to the search tab and search for specific phrases. So for example, I'm going to search for signal. Then it will show you many different free apps that are available for use with Origin and Origin Pro 
that you can download and install. Okay, so if you like a particular app, uh, this one just adds white noise to your signal. Just click and it will download and add to your collection. Okay, then you can launch the app from there. Once you download apps, they all go into an all tab, but you can right click and create your own new tab, which is what I have done here. And then any particular app, you can right click and decide which tab it should show up in. So I had chosen some of the signal processing apps and made a more compact view so I can quickly access all my signal processing apps. Okay. Another trick when you want to reach out to an app, if you don't want to navigate and find where it is, you can just go to the search button and click A for app and say FFT. And then it'll show, okay, already an FFT examiner app is installed. It requires a graph to be active. That's why it's grayed out. There is a 3D smoother app. There is a spectral broadening app, which have not yet been downloaded. So it also shows you apps that you have, don't have yet and you may be able to get, okay? One note about apps. The apps have a minimum version requirement. So the recent apps require the latest version. Um, and some of the apps are also only available for Origin Pro. The same goes with tools inside Origin. So let me show you first the tool menu. With a worksheet active, if you go to the menu, you will see an analysis menu. If you click on that, there are several subcategories and there is signal processing. If you have standard Origin, some of these may be missing, for example, Wavelet or Short Time Fourier Transform or Infinite Impulse Response Filter. So many of the advanced features are available only with Pro. You can easily upgrade, upgrade your origin version to Pro. The same goes with apps. Some are only available with Pro. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, so let me move on to some very simple uh, starting exercises. So here I have a worksheet with an X column and a Y column. As you know, Origin has this association where if you have, uh, columns can have designations set as X, set as Y and such. And if I click on a Y column and make a plot, go to the plot menu and make a line plot, Origin will, will look to the left and pick up the values from the nearest X column. So in my case, it's creating this graph where it's using the values from A column as my timestamp, right? Okay, so then you can use units such as seconds or milliseconds and our FFT tool will recognize the standard units. I'll show that later. But sometimes your measurement data may not have any X, okay? So if you plot that, if I go again to the plot menu and plot that, origin is simply gonna plot it against row number, okay? That's not particularly useful for signal analysis. So how can you remedy this? So you can either add an X column to the front of this and fill in with values, or better yet, if you know the sampling rate, you can click on this column. And in recent versions, there is a sampling interval icon. It's also available from the column menu. I can click that and I can put in my sampling interval. So you can see my, uh, time starts at zero and my sampling interval, this is assumed to be seconds, is 0 0.001. And if I put that in, it's gonna put an icon on the column here, which represents the sampling interval. So if I click on it, it will show the sampling interval, you can change it. Now, if I plot it, it's gonna pick up that sampling interval property in the column and plot using those values, even though you don't have an explicit column. So I just wanted to emphasize that because some import formats such as SPC, uh, maybe NITDMS, I don't quite remember, they may come in as just Y columns, but the sampling interval will be set by the import routine. So this is where you go to see your sampling interval or your signal sampling frequency. Okay, now, Another simple uh, situation, this comes up often with customers. You may have a couple of signals. I have here an X1, Y1, and an X2, Y2, but you see that the sampling interval is slightly different. This goes in steps of phi E minus four. This goes in steps of, of 5.2 E minus four. Sometimes you may want to 
change that to have a uniform X for both signals. So this is possible from the analysis menu using mathematics interpolate Y from X. That dialogue is a little complex for multiple signals. So we decided to make a new tool uh, for, let me see, maybe I did not get that tool over into this tab. Um, synchronized signals, I forgot to put that into my, oh, it's already there, I somehow missed it. So if I click synchronized signals, I can choose what are my input signals, in my case, EMG2. Oh, sorry, um, I should have named EMG1 and EMG2. Let me just fix that so there is no confusion. Okay, so now let me fire up the app again, and I can select my signals EMG1 and also EMG2. Origin will then examine and look at what's the maximum frequency. It's not rounding it off, it's 2000 Hertz. And you can put in a new sampling frequency if you want. So I can go in here and say, make it 3000 Hertz. And then you can put in methods, linear, cubic spline, Akima spline and such. You can also use a common X range if you want. And if you click okay, it'll create a new sheet where it's generated the X columns with the exactly same step value. Okay, so the both signals are at the same sampling rate. So this might be useful before you start doing an FFT if you're comparing two signals and such, okay? Okay, somebody said they don't see sampling interval icon. Maybe they have an older version of origin, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, someone asked, can you change the recorded signal frequency? You can change it, you can change the X values or the sampling interval without affecting the Y values, okay? So I could go in here, for example, and make a correction and say, sorry, that was 0 0.001, okay? Then the graph will catch up, but, but the values of Y values, the amplitude, of course, it doesn't change, okay? All right, let's go on to smoothing. Some simple examples of smoothing, okay? Let me take this first data set here and go to the analysis menus to signal processing and open our smoothing tool. So this tool has a preview window. You can turn on auto preview. Okay, you can expand the dialogue and also stretch this window more to the right so you can see more of the signal. You can also zoom in, okay, to a certain part to see how things are going. You can rescale. You can hold the Z key and zoom, you can hold the X key and pan. These are new features that we introduced in maybe four or five versions ago, zoom and pan just using keyboard shortcuts. Now, there are many different methods for smoothing. Savitsky Goulet is quite popular. Okay, there is the basic adjacent averaging. You can go in and put a window, for example, 15 points. You can do a weighted average if you want. Okay, uh, there is Savitsky Goulet, okay. Savitsky Golay tries to maintain the shape of the data a little better than other methods. Put in your smoothing points. Here, I'm not bothered about the frequency um, of my signal and um, what's happening to various frequency components. I just want a smooth uh, curve. Okay, we will come to using FFT for better filtering later. Okay, there is all. Okay, so then you can click OK and origin will create a column by the side um, using the same sampling interval, using the same X column uh, with the results, okay? Let me look at another example. This uh, signal has short noise, okay? So let's see if we can remedy that. Okay, again, fire up the same. I can use the most recently used items that show up under the menu for quick access. So if I open that, you can turn on preview. Obviously, Savitsky Gole wouldn't do a good job with this, but we do have a percentile filter. So what the percentile filter is, does is to look at the data percentile in each window, and you can pick a small percentile, uh, like five or so, and you will see that that cleanly did a nice job of removing short noise. So if you have signals with spikes, you may first want to smooth it before you go ahead and do anything else with it. All right, another example. So this is a rather noisy data set. 
let me fire up again the smooth dialog and the default methods like adjustment averaging savitsky gole wouldn't do a good job there is fft filter you could play with that but for this particular exercise i wanted to show you lowers okay this was introduced somewhat recently um, i don't remember how many versions ago our website does have version history so you can go look what was added when so this does a really nice job of maintaining the overall signal shape and removing this very high percentage of noise in the signal so you may want to check that out lower smoothing okay is it possible to add low pass and high pass filters somebody is asking yes i will get to that soon under filtering okay another example uh, envelopes this comes up often as well you may have a signal that you want to compute the upper and lower envelope for it so when a graph is active addition to analysis menu we also have a gadgets menu just wanted to quickly show that there may be some gadgets here that are relevant to signal processing such as fft and rise time i will come to that the envelope is still under signal processing envelope okay so let me open that again you get the nice preview window with this uh, setting tree on the left and you can turn on the preview do you want upper envelope do you want lower envelope or do you want both and the number of points to smooth you can play with that based on the noise in your signal to get envelope curves okay somebody is asking how do i set both initial x value and x increment to 1 so you just click on the sampling interval here and simply set it to 1 and 1 okay so that's simple as that okay obviously that's like a trivial sampling interval so it just defaulted to row numbers okay okay going back to envelope let's move on to another tool so here i have a step signal with noise riding on it <clears throat> so first let me show you a gadget called rise time gadget okay so with this signal i am going to go to the gadgets menu and fire up rise time okay so what this gadget does or what all gadgets do is to give you a region of interest in the signal you can then arrow that move it around and go to a particular region of your signal and then you see it picked up uh, a low value here and a high value here and it's computing rise time and telling me what is the rise range in terms of milliseconds and what's the rise time i can move this around and look at my data uh, to examine rise time do i want fall time all these gadgets have preferences so i can go and change rise time to fall time and click okay and move it around to say the right side edge then it will compute fall time okay <clears throat> so just wanted to show you the that gadget access uh, i am going to now show a change point analysis tool okay it's an app that we recently published and this app uses r so in addition to what origin can do <clears throat> with built in tools we also have the capability of calling python uh, we have embedded python so python is already built into origin and you can add plugins to packages to that python and tap into python routines also if you have r installed on your pc origin can communicate with r uh, later today just wanted to show you uh, we have a webinar coming up at 3:30 on working with r and python with origin so if you have not registered for that go ahead and register for it if you are interested so that webinar is more about how to do coding with python and r but in addition what we have done is we have been building tools for you so you don't need to code so here i have a change point analysis app 
that was built using R, I have already installed it. If you try to install, Origin will check, is there, is there, a, uh, is there R installed? Or it will prompt you to first install R. I have R already installed on my machine. So let me turn on the preview here. And there are various methods. This is a rather complex R library. Okay. So how to identify changes using mean or variance, methods, at most one change or more than one change, okay? Uh, different methods like binary segmentation. Let's choose binary segmentation. It's still finding only one transition. I can go say, go ahead, try to find as many. I can put in a large number. Now it found many, many transitions, but some of them are really riding on noise. So then I can, can go and say penalty. There's a penalty input here and choose a Kaike information criterion. So that takes into account variance in the data and it's ignoring the noise and looking for cleaner transitions. So now you can see if I use the zoom key and zoom in and fan, it nicely found all the transitions in my signal, right? So this is again a nice example of something that's not an origin. It's available in R. We can make a tool for you and then you can make use of it. So this is where we need your feedback. What sort of tools should we build? We may code it ourselves or we may look for a solution with R or Python or other libraries, such as our FFT. We purchased a library from MIT called FFTW. So there are ways for us to get different libraries or use R or Python. Okay. I apologize for the background noise. I'm working from home and the mowers decided to come right when I started the webinar. Okay. Uh, Somebody is asking about the rise fall time tool that I showed earlier. If it can get the rise and fall time of all the um, uh, transitions, I think that tool doesn't do that. It does only one section of the data at a time. So, um, we may be able to improve that tool based on your feedback. So thank you for that question. Okay. Now I am moving on to FFT. Okay. So here I have a signal where I have a sinusoidal wave that keeps changing in frequency. So it's a low frequency up to 0.2 in time. Frequency bumps up up to 0.6, then bumps up again and bumps up again. Okay. Incidentally, when you have uh, plots like this, like I told you, you can use the Z key to zoom in and you can use the X key to pan, zoom again, okay, to see more details of the signal. And you can just hit rescale to bring it all back to the full range, okay? So first, let me show an FFT gadget, okay? This is a built-in gadget. So what that does is it will throw, again, a region of interest on the signal. I can move that around. Okay, and look at different parts of the signal. So for example, if I move it over here, you'll see primarily there is only one frequency component. I can ignore the DC offset in my signal. I can turn off log scale. So you see that's a clean peak. If I move it over here, then I'll see the peak shifted, higher frequency and such. Okay, so that's a useful tool to quickly look at your frequency components in the signal. We also have a more elaborate FFT examiner tool. Okay, that's an app. You can download that. The nice thing here is that it has a lot more controls plus the time signal and the frequency panel are both right one above each other. So it's more intuitive to explore. Okay, so here I can look at amplitude or I can look at decibels. Okay, I can apply different windows. Okay, Hanning window, rectangle window. Obviously the rectangle window re re results in a lot of ripples in the frequency. So you can play with window types, you can do zero padding and such. So this may be a useful tool for just exploring uh, the frequency components in your, in your signal. So these are interactive tools, okay? Very easy to use. But in addition, we also have an FFT tool, okay? For more rigorous auto-updatable calculation. So if I go here, go to signal processing and fire up the FFT tool, the tool comes up. There's a preview window here again. Okay, I can turn on the preview. By default, the preview shows my frequency spectrum and the phase. 
I can go to options and I can change that. I can say instead of amplitude on phase, just show me amplitude or just show me normalized decibels, for example. Okay, uh, whichever way you want to see. There are again conventions here for windowing, um, uh, options for windowing, and again conventions for FFT such as electrical engineering convention versus science, con science convention for phase, shift or unshift, unwrapping phase, many options. So you can look up our uh, help file for details on these. Okay, and then several plot options. What do you want to plot in the final results? And where does the output go? And if I click OK, it will create a detailed report. OK, so if I go to my book where my data was stored, you will see it added an FFT result sheet with all the quantities I, that I wanted to compute, real, imaginary, magnitude, amplitude, phase, and all the result graphs nicely in panels. So I can double click, open, look at my magnitude plot. I can double click, open, look at my decibel plot and such. So this clearly shows the four frequency components in my signal, okay? Any questions? We are about halfway there. Okay. All right. Now that we have seen that origin is capable of doing FFTs, Let's move on to filtering data. Okay. Somebody said presentation speed is high. I apologize. I am a fast talker. Let me try to slow down. And I also want to tell you the webinar is being recorded. You can download it. You can play it back at your own convenience, your own speed, pause, fast forward, open the project and play with all of this, what I'm showing you yourself later, okay? So here I have a signal that has a 60 Hertz noise riding on it, okay? Somebody's asking what are the settings for IFFT? I'm not going, going into every tool today due to lack of time. So we have several tutorials. So if you go to help uh, in, in origin, the help menu, and open tutorials under origin. There is tutorials. We have over a hundred tutorials and they're all online. You can also download and install them. So if you go uh, in here, you will see various tutorials. Uh, we also have videos, okay, on, on all aspects of origin plotting and analysis. In addition, we also have a learning center. So let me press F11. The learning center is also accessible from the help menu or the F11 key. If I press that, perhaps you are familiar with this. You can see we have graph samples. You can use those to look at what graph types are available in origin and play with those, open any of them and then change the data to, um, play around with your own data to create the graphs. You can also look at analysis samples. So under analysis samples, we have different categories. So there is signal processing. So you have many different options here, binomial smoothing, continuous wavelet, decimation, envelope that I showed you, okay, Hilbert transform, multi-scale DWT. So I recommend that you use this as a learning source for things that I'm not showing today. Obviously I cannot cover all of these in a 45 minute webinar. Okay, so this is a really good resource for you to learn. Plus, I want to emphasize tech support is there to help you. So when you run into any issues, reach out to us. Okay, let me move on here. I have a signal here that has a 60 Hertz noise riding on it. Okay, so how to remove this? Okay, first let me go try use a simple FFT filter tool. So the product comes with multiple filtering options. I have an FFT filter here. Let me open that. There is also an IIR filter. I'm going to show you both and then show you why IIR is better. Okay. Um, so let me expand this. I'm going to do auto preview. And you can see here nicely 
the frequency uh, spectrum. So you can see a very sharp spike at 60 Hertz and the rest of the components belong to my original signal, right? So the idea is I want to remove the spike, but maintain as much of the frequency components of my original signal without distorting them. So obviously here I need a band block filter. I want to block a certain frequency range, okay? Origin picks up some auto values that may not make any sense. So I'm just going to change to 59 and 61. So I'm using a very narrow frequency range here, right? So you can see it did a fairly good job. All of my noise is gone and the true signal that was buried under my 60 Hertz noise is visible. Okay. So let's go ahead and accept this. Okay. So there is my result. So now I'm going to plot this again. Okay. And this time around, I'm going to use infinite impulse response filter. So one quick trick, if you have a layer like this and you want to see it much wider in recent versions of origin, you can just hold and stretch it. Okay, then you can click near the end of the page and we have these nice mini toolbars that pop up with useful tools. One of them being fit page to layer. So if I click that, it's going to size my page to be wide. I can turn on anti-aliasing, then the graph looks much better, okay? So I have this graph now, same data. I'm gonna to go to analysis, okay? And fire up the infinite impulse response filter, okay? This is available only in Pro, okay? This is a more complex tool. Uh, you can look up the documentation for algorithms and stuff. I'm gonna show you some simple settings with this. The default met method is Butterworth filter, okay? And the default was low pass. Obviously, that's not what I want. I want band stop, right? <clears throat> and I'm going to put my number of filter orders to be two, okay? And I'm going to put the cutoff frequency again to be 59, starting at 59, going to 61, okay? So a narrow band there. Now, <clears throat> this did a better job with the signal, okay? Because I know what the original signal was, okay? I'll show you again later by comparing the two. One important thing to look here is there are other tabs. There is filter specification. So that just shows a schematic of what we are doing, the cutoff FC1 and FC2. Much more importantly, it shows a magnitude and phase response, okay? Here you can see the filter that I designed just now, a Butterworth filter of order two, a band stop filter with these cutoff frequencies, has a very sharp attenuation in decibels of about 25. So it's very narrow and very sharp, and it's going to attenuate my signal significantly between 59 and 61 and nowhere else. So that's the beauty of IAR filter. Okay. And then, of course, you can look at the filter here, you can zoom in like I told you before, look at sections of your data to see how the filter is doing and such, okay? I'm gonna click okay. And now when you compare, you can already see there is more noise leaking in into the result from the plain, from the simpler band block filter compared to the IAR filter, okay? So here are the filtered results from both of them. This is a signal, this is the fi basic filter, and this is the IAR filter. So with this book active, let me fire up my FFT tool, okay? And I'm gonna first look at the signal. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the preview, and I'm gonna go to my options, and I'm gonna show the preview to be normalized decibel. So this is my raw signal, as you remember. It has various frequency components and this noise riding there at 60, right? Let's go back to the input and let's change the input to the filtered result from the simple filter tool. You'll see it did something very odd. If you look at the decibel response, it it's almost like it overcorrected for that range so that there is a very sharp drop around 60 hertz, okay? 
Now let me go to the IAR filter result. You'll see it did a much better job of attenuating. This is in decibels, remember. So this is attenuation already more than 25 decibels attenuation. So it did a nice job of reducing that 60 hertz spike and maintaining the rest of my data, integrity of my data. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay. So we are up to about 40 minute mark and I'm going to spend the rest of the time looking at a couple more tools. <laughs> okay. Um, time frequency analysis. Okay. So let's take some simple example. Here I have a chirp signal. Okay. A chirp signal is one where the frequency keeps shifting, increasing or decreasing as time goes along. Okay. Let me just stretch it so you can see it better. Okay. Am I doing okay with speed? Am I talking too fast? Okay. I'm just going to zoom in here. Okay. So let's first look at this with the F50 examiner. Okay. So the F50 examiner lets you slide the window here. As you slide it, you can see the frequency keeps shifting to the right. So frequency keeps changing gradually, right? Okay. By the way, you have option in this tool to have two windows so you can look at what's the frequency at the left end compared to what's the frequency at the right end. You also have this tool to read what's the frequency there, okay, frequency values and such. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's so what we want to do is create a map of how the frequency changes as a function of time. Again, if I use this tool, I can manually move it, right? I can put a window here. Let me make the window a little wider. I can look at the frequency, move it, look at the frequency. I can decide, do I shift it or overlap it? Keep overlapping, keep moving, nudging it a little bit at a time to the right to see the shift in the frequency. So what I want to do is create a map of how the frequency changes as a function of time by using this window technique. And that's exactly what you do with short time Fourier transform. So let's take the signal and fire up. There are three ways to do this in origin. I'll show you all three and show you which works better. Okay. We have a basic short time Fourier transform tool. So let me open that. Okay. This tool simply applies a window in the time domain and keeps sliding it. Okay. So if I go to auto preview now, you can see it did a fairly okay job. You can see that the frequency here is slowly increasing as a function of time. There are a few controls here, FFT length. I'll leave that alone. Uh, by the way, with all these tools, Origin will pick up the sampling interval, whether it's a sampling interval sitting in your column or whether it's uh, um, um, your X values, it will pick that up and use that to compute the FFT. So if it's in seconds, it will use hertz. If it's in milliseconds, it will use kilohertz and so, so on. Here I can play with my window length. I can say, okay, make my windows, leave my window length 125, but overlap more, like let's say 200. So it's shifting less each time, still overlapping by 200 points in every shift. So you see that the frequency resolution here becomes finer. Okay, let me go with 250, okay? But then, the problem with the tool is when you try to improve frequency resolution, time resolution will go bad. When you improve time resolution, frequency res resolution will go bad. So you will end up fighting with yourself with the window length and overlap and settings. So it's not ideal for analyzing signals with complex frequency spectra. Let's see what else we can do. So let me go to a better example, a more complex example. Here I have a double chirp signal. Okay, so if I look at this with the F50 examiner, you will see there are two frequency components. Okay, let me turn on another region of interest. And the, the two frequency components keep shifting to the right. So it's a little bit more complex than the simple chirp signal that I showed you. Okay, so this one would fail pretty bad with the STFT. So let me show you the STFT. 
and let me turn on the preview. Okay, you see jumps in the frequency, not so good. Again, it's a game of fighting with the windows. So we have just recently in this version, 2020B, introduced a modified short time frequency tool. Okay, and this was based on a paper that somebody uh, forwarded to us. Let me just open um, the paper. It's a paper from Digital Signal Processing that uses a technique of doing the windowing not in time domain, but in frequency domain. So the paper was written with sample code for MATLAB. We took that approach and coded our own app in origin. Okay, so now let me turn on the preview. Okay, this is a little bit more computationally intensive because it's doing repeated um, iterative window moving in the frequency domain, not in the time domain. So you can see here it clearly, very nicely represents my two chirp signals, right? Here again, there are many settings, the number of cycles to use. I have used some value that's ideal for this data set. You can play with that. There are different window techniques and such. Okay, then if I click okay, it's gonna create my result. Okay, let's take a look at that. I can go in here. It's a matrix because it's frequency versus time. I can go ahead and turn off speed mode. So everything is plotted. Then I can click on this axis and say, I don't need to see the entire frequency range. Show me just up to 5,000 Hertz, okay? and increments of 100, okay, click okay. So you will see that there are the two clear bands for chirp one and chirp two, okay? So this is a very nice tool, I think, but it's for you to judge. So please play it with your data and give us feedback. We would very much appreciate feedback. Here again, my point is because a user approached us and asked us and pointed us to this paper we were able to build the tool. So that's where you come in. If you know of a certain technique that's lacking in origin, a tool that you would love to use in origin, we can code it for you, okay? Let me take another complex example. Oh, let me go back here and show this data also with a wavelet tool, okay? So we do have some wavelet capability in origin and we have created a time frequency analysis app, which uses continuous waveless transform. So let me fire up that app. And it has again, some default settings. What frequency range do you want to analyze in? And what type of wavelet, modulate wavelet versus mix hat and number of waves and such. Okay, let me click okay. It will then compute and create again that map frequency versus time, okay. And looking at this right away, it doesn't look like anything that's understandable. Maybe there is a little bit of indication here of the two um, signal frequencies as a function of time. Let me go into this contour plot and then change the levels. I don't want to represent everything there. Let me change to 1E minus three and click okay. And now you can see the two components, but this is not as simple as the other tool where you saw a clean line, a linear line. This is not linear because this is using wavelet scale factors. So it's not really plotting against the actual linear frequency. But you can see that the frequency component is a two different components. So if this is your cup of tea, you think wavelet is more appropriate, that's the tool for you. But I think personally, this new tool with modified short time transform that uses windowing on the frequency domain works much better. Okay, let's take a more complex example. Here I have a signal, um, two, two blocks of frequency. So let me zoom in. Okay, so here is a block of frequency. Let me pan, I'm using the Z key and the X key to do that, okay. So there is a burst of signal, then some noise, then another burst of signal. And also to add to the fun, there is also a very sharp spike here, okay? On, on both of those measurements, okay? Now, 
if you try to resolve this with the STFT tool, again, you will have a tough time. Okay, you'll still be fighting with so it did resolve the frequencies pretty good with the default settings. I could see a frequency here at 100 hertz and one at 200 hertz, but you see it did an awful job of the time resolution. So I cannot clearly see where the spikes occurred in my data. I've taken the same and used the new tool, already created the result here for you. So now you can see how nice it is. It shows clearly the frequency band here around 100, another around 200, but it also shows that spike occurring right in the middle of those signals, okay? By the way, these contour plots all can use different color maps. You can change them by simply clicking. In recent versions, there is a color palette button. You can click on that and choose any nice palette that you want. So for example, I choose a uh, thermometer palette, okay? So for whatever color of choice that you want to use, okay? All right, any questions on this? Somebody is asking about deconvolution. Again, um, we have examples of that. So please check that out. And if you need help, send your questions to tech support. The last thing I wanted to show is a nice app that we created from a user who works in sports medicine. Okay. And he wanted to analyze a video and associated signal together, or rather explore the video and the uh, signal together in origin. So we created a video explorer app. I'm showing this as part of signal processing just to show you what possibilities exist in origin in terms of also working with images and videos and signal data. So this might give you some ideas on other tools that you may then suggest. So this again is an app. So uh, I have a video and a measurement. I'll show you this app has an associated YouTube video. So you can play that before installing the app to understand what this app can do and whether that's applicable to you. Many of our key apps have associated YouTube videos with them. Okay. I, I'm going to, I'm going to close that. Okay. And I'm going to come back here and I have the data already with me. So let me fire up the app. Now, for sake of the Zoom meeting, I had set my resolution to be rather low. So this dialogue is a little tricky. There are some buttons below that you can't see. I'll show you the basics of this tool so you get an idea and then you can play with it on your higher resolution monitor. So I'm gonna load a video file. Okay, so my video file is, let me see, desktop, webinars, signal processing, video data, and that's a GoPro video, okay, an AVI file. So there is a video. And I have associated data, trunk angular velocity. So a sensor was attached to the player to measure the trunk angular velocity signal, okay? And I opened that, and Origin reads it. That file happened to have just one column of value. It did not have any X value. So it's asking me what was my data sampling rate? I happen to know it, the sampling rate was 128 hertz. So I click okay, the data comes in. Now the nice thing is you can slide this slider here, go to any section of the video, look at what's happening with the video at the corresponding value in the data. Okay, I can slide around. So let me zoom in here. I hold the Z key and zoom in. And then zoom in, let me zoom in a little more. So I can go here and let's say slide in here. So this is the point where the player is about to strike the ball. And when they strike the ball, the trunk velocity significantly changes. So there is a down spike there. And now they're recovered from um, this, uh, that position, coming back up, you know, back up again. So then this app lets you annotate. You can go add an event. Uh, it's hard to see here. I apologize for the resolution problem. You can watch the video. You can add events and mark everything and export it so that you can see it. Uh, the ball strike event happened at what time and which frame of the video. So this doesn't do any analysis. It's just exploration of uh, video and associated measurement data. I'm showing this to give you some ideas. Maybe you would 
have a possibility. Somebody is asking, would it be possible to analyze EEG with video? Yes, please, please contact us. If you can share what you want to do, associated video and the signal and tell us what the GUI should do, what should be the controls, what should be the output, we would be happy to work with you. Okay, so that's my key message. Okay. So I hope this webinar was useful and it gave you a sampling of various tools available in origin for signal processing. Again, keep in mind, in addition to the tools in origin and origin pro, we have many apps and we can keep creating more apps. Apps are easier for us to develop and add because we don't have to wait for an origin release cycle. If no change in origin is needed, such as no new um, graph types or base libraries, we can simply develop the app. And if the app is simple, it might take a couple of weeks. If the app is complex, it might take a month. So we are happy to work with you. Again, after the webinar today or maybe Monday, you will get an email. Please give us your feedback. Please take the survey. And we are relying on you to make Origin even better in the area of analysis and particularly signal processing in today's context. Thank you very much. You all have a good afternoon and stay healthy and stay safe. I leave the webinar running because there may be some questions that uh, you, you may want to ask, so you can continue asking. Uh, a user is asking, can you import multiple ch data channels in the video data explorer? I don't remember off the top of my head. I believe yes. I don't have suitable data to show you, so please try it. The app is free. All you need is the latest version of Origin. Uh, I believe not even the latest version. Let me go to the app page. Any icon here you see, you can right click and reopen the app page. That's useful because the app page may have notes on settings and such. We don't necessarily um, add help files to the app itself. So this requires Pro and it will work with 2020 onward. So it will work with 2020 and 2020 B. Someone else is asking a question, how can I use the same baseline for several spectra? Uh, that's more about baseline under peak analysis. So maybe you have IIR spectra, um, my intention here was to cover signal processing, not in the context of peak analysis. We have webinars on peak analysis. We have done them before. So if you go to our website and if you go to support, you will see a link for webinars. And then if you scroll down, you will see recorded webinars. This is where you will be coming anyway to get the webinars from the past. So here is a peak analysis webinar. I would recommend that you play this or download it. Okay. And that will give you ideas. We have several techniques for baseline detection uh, and correction before peak fitting is done. Okay. We have a new webinar that we put up for what's new in 2020B, another one on tracking and plotting COVID data. Okay. Incidentally, on our website, we have an ongoing graph that we update every day to show the overall picture world trend with COVID crisis. And this is based on an idea from a physicist from a YouTube video, plotting daily cases versus cumulative cases. You see many countries, they bend the curve rather quickly before things got bad, US is still going. Nowhere near a sharp turn. Okay, any other questions, comments? I still see quite a few attendees. Um, if you have questions, you can hang around and ask them. I'll, we'll keep the webinar going for some more minutes. We have another webinar at 2 p.m. Okay, so if you haven't signed up, 
you can still register. Okay, at 2 p.m. we'll be covering publishing graphs and 3.30 p.m. we'll be working with R and Python. And then coming up June 12th, we have a webinar on using set column values for data processing in origin, HTML and markdown reports, batch processing. Incidentally, many of the windows I'm using here are using markdown syntax. So if I right click and go syntax and show text, sorry, if I do control M, you'll see that I put in some syntax for markdown, which is similar to HTML, but much easier to work with to make nice windows, notes windows inside origin with headings and bullets and such. Somebody's asking, can random telegraph signal analyze by change point analysis? Honestly, I don't know what that is. Again, the app is free. Download and try and reply to us if you run into problems. The change point analysis app is using an R library. Somebody is asking, why is it not possible to upgrade origin from 2019 to 2020B without downloading 2020B complete? Okay, good question. So our new versions are not patches. We decided many years ago not to do that. So the decision was based on our software architecture, whatever it is. And many customers appreciate it because sometimes they install both versions and they continue working with the old version play with the new version and switch to the new when they are comfortable switching. So sometimes, to be honest with you, users are a bit hesitant to see what changed in the new version. Maybe something changed in the GUI. So there is a transition period. And in our experience, this works much better. And you can always go back and uninstall the previous version when you're done with it. Okay, I'll stop sharing, but we'll leave the question and answer running for a while if you have more questions. I'm going to mute myself. Thank you again for attending, and we look forward to seeing you in another webinar.